Just over a week ago, we saw teasers with the tagline, The One Never Seen. And we've been fortunate enough to get a few hours hands-on time with Sony's latest groundbreaking camera. With high resolution, partnered with high-speed shooting, 8K video recording, a blackout-free viewfinder, plus so much more, this sounds almost too good to be true. I'm Pete from London Camera Exchange, and this is the Sony Alpha One. Weighing in at 737 grams, this stacked full-frame mirrorless camera features a 50.1 megapixel sensor, which is capable of shooting a whopping 30 frames per second in RAW with autofocus. Now let that just sink in for a second, as previously we have seen both high-res and high-speed cameras from Sony, namely in the A7R series, which is perfect for studio and landscape shooters, and the A9 series tailored towards sports photographers, but now these are combined as one. This has been possible thanks to the revised dual Bionz XR processors, which Sony have said are eight times faster than before, which greatly minimizes processing latency, whilst image and capture performance is dramatically improved. With a native ISO range from 100 to 32,000 that's expandable to 50 to 102,400, the A1 is in no way going to outrank the low light sensitivity of the A7S III. But for a high resolution camera with a 15 stop dynamic range, the minimal amount of visible noise at those high ISOs is certainly impressive. Inside, of course, we find Sony's famous real time IAF. But in addition to both humans and animals, we now also find the ability to focus on birds. AI-based real-time tracking automatically maintains focus on your subjects whilst the shutter button is half-pressed. And across the sensor, we find 759 phase detection points, covering approximately 92% of the imaging area. This ensures accurate focusing where scenes might otherwise be difficult to capture. Along with this, you also get 425 contrast AF points that work in partnership to ensure a precise AF operation in any environment. Continuous shooting at that high 30 frames per second requires you to use the electronic shutter, and if we switch to the mechanical shutter, you can shoot continuously up to 10 frames per second. When shooting at that high speed, you can capture approximately 165 JPEG images or 155 compressed RAW shots, giving you roughly five and a half seconds of continuous shooting. In the past, one of the advantages of using the mechanical shutter over the electronic is to reduce the rolling shutter effect. The A9 did a really good job in reducing this in your images, and Sony has improved this by at least one and a half times in the Alpha 1. Now, I'm by no means a golfing champion, but seeing as it's locked down, I borrowed a few clubs from a friend and decided to get a little practice in on my swing. With rolling shutters, we tend to find that when you swing a club at a high speed, the resulting image created bends the club's shaft. When shooting at 30 frames per second, we can see that there is little to no distortion in these images. Another advantage to using the electronic shutter is the silent, vibration-free operation, perfect for sports or quiet environments. Something new is the addition of the anti-flicker shooting. Previously, this has only been possible using the mechanical shutter, but now Sony has been able to produce this whilst using the electronic, giving you up to 120 autofocus and auto exposure calculations per second, along with that 30 frames per second continuous shooting. And all of this is available working under fluorescent, LED, or artificial lighting. You also have the ability to shoot up to 200th of a second when using flash, or switching across to the mechanical shutter, allowing up to a sync of 400th of a second, making it easier to capture dynamic action shots. With a tilting touchscreen and a 9.44 million dot electronic viewfinder that's also blackout free, allows you to effortlessly track your subjects through your frame. Five axis in-body image stabilization compensates for up to five and a half stops, 
and allows you to capture the maximum quality handheld at that large 50 megapixel resolution. You have the option of both standard and active stabilization, and when shooting in active, you gain an increased performance that results in smooth content suitable for video recording without any additional equipment like tripods or gimbals. Video specs wise, the A1 creates stunning content up to 8K at 30p, all internally. Now, you might say, why would you want to shoot in 8K, as hardly anyone has the means to play this, but I'll come back to that shortly. Capturing from a full frame 5.8K oversampled image, your 4K footage remains high in detail with no pixel binning resulting in approximately 2.3 times the amount of data needed for a 4K video, all being condensed internally. This helps to keep that high resolution content clean and minimizes any moiré that could appear in your shots. You can shoot up to 120 frames per second, allowing for five times slow motion, giving a smooth and dreamy result. For anyone looking to gain a higher color capture, you can also shoot in 10-bit 422 internally at all available frame rates for a maximum of 600 megabits per second when using the all-eye compression. The long got format is also available when shooting, and for any pro cine shooters, you can match the A1's footage up to an FS6 or FX9 thanks to the included S cine tone color matrix that results in soft tones, beautiful skin colors, and gorgeous highlights. Hooking up the A1 to an external recorder sees a 16-bit raw output, giving a maximum post-production flexibility, and you can also record to the internal media cards in a lower format at the same time. So let's get back to that 8K internal recording. I shot a handful of content in this resolution, and my laptop didn't take too kindly to playing it back. I had the usual jolts and stutters, but what I can do with it is use it in a few interesting ways. If my resulting production was for instance either 4K or Full HD, an 8K clip can be happily cropped, reframed and even stabilised, giving multiple different scenes from one original source, yet still keeping that resolution and picture quality high. One other thing that I was keen to try out was taking a still frame from an 8K video to see how it holds up when compared to a normal still image. Coming in at around 30 megabytes in size and leaving you with an approximate 33 megapixel image, shooters can now capture both high res video and extract high res stills from their content with ease. Now, this will chew up your hard drives, but this really opens up the opportunities when faced with those one chance situations in the world of sports wildlife, or even weddings and photojournalistic reporting. The good old overheating issue could still be a problem, but whilst I had the Alpha 1 and I shot some 8K bursts of footage, there was no issues or warnings given. Sony has quoted that you can shoot up to 8K 30p or 4K 60p videos at 10 bit continuously for more than 30 minutes, thanks to their newly developed heat dissipating structure. We find dual card slots capable of housing either CF Express Type A or SD cards. Connectivity in the form of 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi Fi is available, and we also have the addition of an Ethernet LAN port and a fast USB Type C port capable of supporting up to 10 gigabits per second of transfer. For a camera that combines two of the most impressive features from Sony's Alpha range with high resolution and speed, it's going to be rather exciting to see how creatives use the Alpha 1 in a range of new and different environments. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit subscribe, ring that bell to get notifications of all of our latest content, and if you'd like any more information, please check out the link below or get in touch with your local London Camera Exchange.